Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Now, I may live on the opposite side of the world, but it was hard to avoid the goings on at Watches and Wonders in Switzerland last week. And there was one brand that dominated my Instagram feed. That brand was Tudor. I reckon about half of the posts about Watches and Wonders were about Tudor's new releases. The gold Black Bay 58, the monochrome Black Bay 41, and the retro gilt Black Bay 58 GMT, more than the other two combined. Now, you can keep the gold one, frankly, especially for $47,500 but I would not complain about having either of the other two in my collection. It seems that Tudor can do no wrong at the moment. It's been a full five years since they launched their rather unusual P01 back at Basel World 2019. That was the last miss. That means a full five years of the public lapping up every single new release. I've got one of those relatively new releases on my wrist for review today. This is the black dial version of their Pelagos FXD. It is loosely labeled as a US Navy edition, or at least Tudor referenced their supply arrangement in the marketing materials for this watch. Now, I looked at the FXD not long after launch a couple of years ago, and I really liked it, although the fixed lugs and countdown bezel did make it a bit of a niche piece. That one was on loan from Mr. X, this one is on loan from Mr. P. He has got a fair selection of Tudors in his collection at the moment. He's got a Pelagos 39 and also a Ranger. Thank you very much, Mr. P, for the loan of this one. I really like the Pelagos range, and this is definitely the best FXD that I've ever seen. But I do have a couple of complaints. Of course I do. Let's flip the camera and find out what they are. All right, let's get into it and let's start by talking about packaging and warranty. Packaging is the same as Tudor has been using now for a number of years. It's okay. It's not Omega standard though, put it that way. Just a cardboard box, inner, outer with that white sheath. Plenty of Tudor shields though in various spots to remind you of exactly what it is you have purchased and inside it contains the watch. Now, five year warranty on these, which is good because this is a luxury item. You're paying a lot of money for this, so a five year warranty is what you'd expect. Couple of instruction manuals here and a warranty card down the bottom. Now, also we have a little something extra in that neat pouch at the top. We have a second black rubber strap. Now, Tudor refer to that strap as complimentary, but note the spelling of complimentary. It's complimentary with an E, meaning it suits and matches the watch rather than I. It's free because at $6,140, my friends, nothing is free. And no discounts on Tudors, unfortunately. Mr. P tried his hardest. Believe me, no one tries harder for a discount than the New Zealander, Mr. P. He didn't manage anything, but he did get a couple of gifts with purchase, so that's probably the best you can expect. As I said, luxury watch, luxury watch pricing today. So luxury watch pricing then, but I think you're getting something that looks and feels every inch a luxury watch for your six grand Aussie. I really like the Pelagos line. I think I've looked at four or five of them now. I looked at the lefty, the righty, the FXD, the 39, and now this one. I would have one of these watches in a heartbeat. I think it is a beautifully styled, really clean, really simple watch. And because they're titanium, they are all fabulously wearable as well. So in terms of dimensions, the FXD is 42 mil in diameter. That's the kind of list quotation anyway on the diameter dimension. However, the bezel is 42. You can see there the case itself is slightly narrower, 41 mil, but they quote this one as a 42, and so therefore will I. Thickness is 12.9, bang on 50 mil lug to lug, 22 mils between the lugs, but as mentioned, titanium, this one as supplied on this canvas and Velcro strap, 83 grams on the nose. Fantastically light for a full-size dive watch with 200 meters of water resistance, flat sapphire crystal, of course, with plenty of anti-reflective undercoating, and you get a cracking Tudor in-house caliber, the MT5602. You can't see it today, though, because of a solid case back. Tudor do some display case backs on their more expensive uh, Black Bay models. The gold, I believe, has a display case back, as has the silver one that I reviewed a couple of years ago as well. However, I'll show you a picture of the movement. 
Not super decorated, but also quite attractive at the same time, and full of Tudor's latest tech. 25 joules, 70 hour power reserve, silicone balance spring. Now it is COSC certified, meaning a maximum daily variance of between minus four and plus six seconds per day. No COSC paperwork in with the packaging, so you're gonna have to take Tudor's word for it. Of course it hacks, of course it hand winds, the rotor will spin in both directions, winding the watch in both directions, and the beat rate is 28.8, leading to eight ticks of the second hand per second. Finishing is really nice throughout. It has that signature dull gray titanium color, nice and smooth to the touch as well, unlike some cheaper titanium watches, which can be rough. Very fine horizontal brushing here. Now there is a chamfer running from lug tip to lug tip, but they haven't gone overboard. They haven't polished it or anything like that. It is a tool diver after all. Semi-guarded crown, I love those Tudor crown guards, just how they come to a nice little point. Tudor shield once again on the crown, and it's a good size. And fixed spring bars, or should I say FX deed spring bars, hence the name for this one. Again, it's a proper tool watch. Now those fixed spring bars obviously restrict what straps you can put on this one. You're not gonna get a traditional two-piece leather or rubber strap, so you're restricted to these either single-piece pass-throughs or NATO straps will fit as well. This supplied one is really high quality, great stitching, great Tudor branded hardware there, very comfortable on wrist too, and Velcro, so infinitely size adjustable. The colors, yeah, hang on for more on that. The complementary single pass rubber strap is also available to you as an option, nice and thin. You don't quite get the infinite adjustability that you do with the Velcro though, you are restricted to these two holes, but again, buckle and tang, Tudor shield, double retainers, yeah. Looks good with the black watch, I think, also. All right, dial and hands. It's a super simple, super clean look on all of the Pelagos range. Gonna be too simple for some, but that's one of the reasons why I'm such a fan of it, because of the simplicity, the legibility, and the suitability for purpose. Big fan of the color scheme, just white on black. That is one of the reasons why it's so legible. I love those floating hands there, blacked out in the center. I love also the fully graded, fully loomed, matte ceramic bezel insert. I'll show you the loom in just a second. So we have signature Tudor handset. Snowflake, our hand, Snowflake, second hand, and a very simple white fence post minute hand. Now the triangle, the three rectangles, and all of the squares are applied. Everything else is just printed on. Tudor Shield, Tudor brand name, and Genève, and then four lines, count them, four lines of text underneath the pinion. Pelagos, chronometer officially certified, and then 200 meters, 660 feet. Now the chapter ring, unfortunately with this one, because it's slimmer than the regular Pelagos range, you don't get that big deep chapter ring, and you don't get those indices cut into the chapter ring. It's actually a really, really narrow rehote, I guess because this one is sub 13 mil thick, but it's there nonetheless, providing a minute track. Overall, clean, simple, legible, purposeful, and gorgeous. And it looks just as gorgeous after dark as well. The loom on the Pelagos is as good as the loom on the Black Bay 58 is uh, not good, shall we say. Super bright initially, you see what I mean? That fully graded, fully loomed bezel really does draw your eyes outward as well. When I turn the speed up on this one, everything still legible at the end of the 20 minute test, particularly the handset though. That's all important, that's what you need, that's what you'd expect when you're paying this much money for a premium Swiss luxury brand. Now, just before I get it on wrist, a word on the bezel insert and the bezel action. When the FXT was launched a couple of years ago with the Marine National tie-in, it was an underwater adventure sports watch. It had a 60 minute count up bezel insert on a 60 click bi-directional bezel. They've gone conventional with this one for the US Navy. It is a standard 60 click dive time bezel. Oh my goodness. Excuse me if I have a bit of a moment here. I think Tudor watches have some of the best bezel actions in the world, and this is up there with the best of the Tudors. What about some wrist shots before I start moaning? I have got a seven inch wrist for your reference. Mr. P actually has a slightly smaller wrist than I do. He's got a six and a half inch wrist or thereabouts. He wears this no problems at all. Not a long lug to lug at 50. Once you start pushing much beyond 50, you start giving people with smaller than average wrists a bit of a problem, but no such problems here. Just check the legibility on that, it is fantastic. 
The Velcro strap isn't going to last forever, so it's nicely made. I think the stitching's going to be okay, but the Velcro itself will inevitably degrade. But yeah, you can get exactly the right fit, just as tight or just as loose as you want over the course of a day. And there we are, that's higher up, further back, top down shot for more perspective. Yeah, if I was in the US Navy and I had been given one of these as my service watch, I would be pretty pleased, I have to say. Very functional, very legible, loads of anti-reflective coating. Yeah, this one is going to have no difficulties being read. Underwater, low light conditions, whatever, doesn't matter. It looks great. All right, moans and niggles. I said I had a few, and here they are. I'm not the first person to complain about this, and it's not the first time I've complained about it. Four lines of text beneath the pinion. A veritable haiku there. Pelagos model name, fair enough. Do we really need chronometer and officially certified though? Surely if it's a chronometer, it is officially certified. Do we even need either of those? Depth rating, again, fair enough. That could easily be compressed down to two lines. Similarly, I would ditch Genève. I don't think it adds anything. We've got Swiss made down there. They're just doubling up all over the place. They could smooth that up, clean it up nicely, removing three lines of text, and it would look all the better for it. But my biggest complaint today is regards the supplied band. Not the complementary one, but the standard Velcro and canvas number. No complaints about its operation. Very nice indeed, everything works, but it's just so literally and figuratively drab. Dull, dull green. The red band, I get, it picks out the red on the dial, but why make it green? It pulls the watch down, and with a virtually monochrome watch with grey case material, that being titanium, I don't think it needs anything else to bring it down. I would have much preferred it if they'd done black here. They've kind of tried to do an off colour, hasn't really worked in my opinion. Therefore, this band would be a bit of a waste on me. I'd be wearing it on the rubber instead. And circling back to price, US Navy on the left, French Navy, the Marine Nationale on the right, both the same price, 6140 Aussie. You've got that Red Bulls limited edition, special edition, whatever it was, slightly cheaper, but then again, no wonder, it's not nearly as nice. I do like the Red Bull chronograph though, but would I really buy an FXD when I could have my pick of the more flexible standard Pelagos ranges for not a lot more money. I appreciate that titanium bracelet does come at a cost, but yeah, I would go for a regular one. You get more flexibility, you get a bracelet for a start, you can put it on a variety of different straps that you simply can't put the FXD on, and it's only a little bit more money than the considerable pile you were gonna drop on an FXD. So this may be the best FXD that I've reviewed so far, but I don't think it's the best Pelagos I've reviewed so far. Having said that, that is just me, it's my personal preference. Mr. X wears his blue one a lot, and Mr. P told me that he would keep this over the 39mm on the bracelet. So perhaps you have to live with one of these long term to really appreciate it, but I'd probably go with the other one. But if you twisted my arm, I could cope with one of these, I guess. So there you have it, just one more fantastic looking Tudor watch, terrifying bank managers across the globe. I just wish they hadn't put it on this shade of green strap. It does nothing for it. It's too dull for me anyway. I would have much preferred if they'd gone for a black with that red stripe. Although perhaps if they had, the already slightly tenuous US Navy tie-in wouldn't have worked quite as well. Thanks again to Mr. P. The Tudor dealership must be licking their lips every time they see you walking in the door, my friend. If you want to see my review of Mr. X's Marine Nationale tie-in FXD, click here, or a three-way Tudor head-to-head, -head, click here. Thanks for making it all the way to the end. I will see you again in the next one.